And I would say, as a body of believers, don't believe that lie. If you buy into that lie that God does not care, it simply <laughs> robs you out of that joy mm -hmm. to enjoy God. It robs you out of your faith, and you can't get any lower than that. Do not believe the lie that God is detached and unconcerned. Don't think, if God cares about me, why would this have happened? Why am I going through this storm? Why is this happening in my life? God doesn't care about me. He doesn't even know my name. Those are simply lies. God does care, and he's not going to let you perish because he is interested in even the smallest details of your life. Right? First Peter 5, 7 says, he cares for you. Right? When you have to you know, cast your cares or cast your burdens upon him. No faith is based on the belief that God does not care and that such a belief is completely false. God does indeed care for you. And think about those, that for just a quick second, right? For those disciples, they're literally <coughs> in the midst of Jesus. Now think about you when you're asleep, storm or not. Somebody comes wake you up. What goes through your mind? <laughs> right? What's wrong, Mark? What's wrong? Like, get out of my room. Leave me alone. Like, let me get my rest. But, like, they're in distance of Jesus where they can touch him. And not saying we can't touch him. I hope you get a chance to touch him. I touch him just about every day. God does some amazing things um, in my life. But he was with them, and he's like, you have no faith. So we're going to look at these, and I just talked about just that one, the no faith. The next one is... You of little faith. And I know some of you probably know um, this scripture, right? Um, Matthew 6, just those four verses, 30 through 34. And you sometimes even sing the songs about it, like a promise of song, one of those Matthew City songs. All right? Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today, is, to, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For all, after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the what? Kingdom of God. Of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So some people, maybe you're in that stage of no faith, maybe you're in that stage of little faith. <clears throat> and as we see in this passage, little faith is a worried faith, worried about tomorrow and occupied with the lack instead of being occupied with God. Mm -hmm. I think if you're feeding into God's word and if you're locked in with him, it's going to be hard to have those worries crowd up all your mind. Does that mean there's not going to be challenges? Can't say that. Right? And they're not going to be hard times with friends, family, core. Hey, we really wanted to do this, but core said no, or we really thought this was the best idea, but this didn't happen. I'm, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying don't worry about those things. Don't let those things overshadow your presence of God. Because God is everywhere. And while people with little faith believe God cares, their focus is sometimes wrong because they are concentrating on the things like, what am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? How am I going to get by? And now, all of those are legitimate things, and your father knows you have those needs. So rather than focusing on your lack and being worried about tomorrow, pulling tomorrow's clouds over today's sunshine, let your focus be on God and his sufficiency and care for you. Amen. So I would encourage you as an individual, do not, do not, do not, a few quick words, do not live a life of little faith. My God didn't call us to that. And I would encourage you as we get ready to get closer to wrapping up. <laughs> Man, let's find a way to have great faith. That's one of the easiest ways, I would say, for us as a body of believers to live. <laughs> Sometimes we go through life with no faith or little faith, but God is calling us to simply just have great faith in him. I think we've seen what God has already been able to accomplish in the midst of each and every one of us. I know sometimes people want to just like, what is going on with the Salvation Army? What is going on with our church? What is going on with our course? I don't know your course specifically, but I would encourage you, maybe do a little history lessons on your course. Find out when your core was established, right? What was year one for your core? And it's still here. So God has been faithful enough. He's not going to stop just because 
you know, and I'll say it if I was at an officer council or not, but like, I'm not gonna stop just because of officer transition. I'm not gonna stop because a family moved away. I'm not gonna stop because a group of kids stopped coming. I'm not gonna stop because leaders don't wanna step up. My like, God is faithful forever. Like, he doesn't have these mood swings or these emotions that we, as humans, deal with. Like, that's not how he rocks, right? He's a little way more next level consistent in his dealing with each and every one of us. So as you get ready to break up, it's just these five questions that I want you to think about as we get ready to wrap up. And I want to, you know, I'm to make sure y'all have y'all time to discuss and dialogue and break down. And I know for some people, um, might be a lot to write, so if you have a phone, it would be easier to just take a picture of it. But if you want to write it all down, you definitely can. I'm um, not going to stop you. Um, but just think about those, right? Do I understand faith better within your own life? Which is like, where am I at um, with my faith? When it comes to growth in my core, do I have no faith, little faith, or great faith? Right? We're like, EB, until we get some new offices, I ain't got to change it. Right? Because that's the reality. If I can, and I would say it wherever. That is the reality for some of our places. Hey, you my time. That is the reality for some of our places. And part of that is because of, at times, the boggle downness of a whole bunch of administrative duties, and it's just like, that seems to be leading towards some of my gifting. And for some, it's because, no, I don't want to empower no leaders. I want to be in charge of everything. I'm going to do Sunday school. I'm going to preach. I'm going to lead the song. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And like, bro, give something up. <laughs> right? And so think about those things. When it comes to maybe your personal walk, because sometimes we have those mindsets where we're like, well, this core ain't doing this, or this core ain't doing this. So back in my day, we used to do this. But when I was a kid, we did it. OK, how about you do it now? What's stopping you from doing some of those things? Right? And then personally, where are you at? Because we can wear the uniform. You can dress the part. You can show up every Sunday. You can even lead a class. You can play in the band. You can play your timbrels. You can lead praise and worship. We can go through the motions. You can be your core sergeant major. You could have been the one for the past 10, 15 years, and you can be somebody who's living a life with no pain. So just think about that. Do you live your life in a way that Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith? Like, do you truly believe those scriptures that tells us that Jesus is the author and the finisher? I don't know about you, but there's no greater person to start and end my story than Jesus. That's right. I want you to just think about, like, that's the person who already wrote the book that tells you um, how to distribute faith into each and every one of us. But he's also the one who started and ended your story. If he's truly the author and the finisher of your faith. And then last but not least, Am I still willing to stay in the fight? And I always, most places I get the opportunity to preach or speak at or teach at, I always kind of close with that one within our church. Because the past 156 years, I believe that God has been doing an amazing thing here in the Salvation Army. From 1865, or I guess we said now. But from there, or, yeah, 1865 now, so that's like July, we made it, 157. So the past 157 years, he's been doing some amazing things. And my question always, the officers, soldiers, kids, teams, are you willing to stay in the fight? I don't know about your neighborhood, but in Tampa, there's a lot of churches. So if you're not willing to stay in the fight, go to another church. There's a lot of churches in our world. There's not really too many places, right, where you don't have to be engaged or part of something. Whether it's home, whether it's school, whether it's work, but there's personal, like you have to find a way to be engaged. And if you're not willing to stay in the fight, I can tell you that there's another church who will gladly have a new member. But I want you to know also that we'll love to have you. But we want to make sure that you're in the fight with us. I hate to get on the battlefield with somebody who don't got my back. That'll really suck. And I don't know what type of army that is, but that ain't no army I want to be a part of. So if you're not willing to stay in the fight, I would say find Find another church. It's not bad. Like, we're all the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll see you in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I'll see you in heaven, right? <laughs> but just, I, I want you guys to just think about just those questions. Have you had those conversations? Um, and I, I just say, and I'll do a quick prayer, but, you know, I just pray that you'll discover where you are at, where you're at, where you see you need to go, and what you need to pursue in order for your faith.
to grow. Let us pray. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this privilege and this opportunity to dig into your word, to think about discipleship, to think about that invitation to holiness, to think about how our faith can and should grow. We ask as we get ready to go to our, I guess you can say our different region groups, and we have these discussion, discussions on these questions, and also still to pick back up on those ideas, needs, and concerns. Maybe it's burning or hopefully it's reigniting a sense of fire inside of us is something that maybe we can lead or we can support or we can be a part of in the days to come within our cores. And God, maybe you have planted that seed in us today. And we know that you have already distributed that faith to each and every one of us. So we already have it inside of us because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And we are thankful and grateful for that. So we ask that you just give us the words to say, the clarity and discernment of what to share, and that you lead the conversation that we have around our tables and around our circles. And may we continue to just glorify you in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, we're going to get together now.